Something is coming. Something angry. Hungry for your blood. It is almost here. What is it? It's the Thessal Hydra, I'm telling you. It's not the Thessal Hydra. I'm telling you, it's the Thessal Hydra. The Thessal Hydra! Ugh. Damn it! It roars in anger! Will your action! What should I do? Firebolt him! Welcome to Monster of the Week, the show where we find old monsters from past editions of D&D and bring them to light for you to use in your 5th edition game. My name is Josiah, also known here as Dungeon Dad, and today I'm bringing you a monster that you may have heard mention of in a certain popular television show, but you might not know exactly what it is. Well, I'm here to enlighten you and hopefully give you a new monster to put in your campaign. So I guess the real question is, have you ever wondered what would happen if you took a snake and a hydra and a bunch of DNA from other random animals and just kind of mashed them all together? Yeah, neither have I, but you know who did is Thessalar. And it's from his horrible life choices that we get the aptly named Thessal Hydra. In AD&D, you can find not only the Thessal Hydra, but the Thessal Treese, Thessal Gorgon, and Thessal Mera. Which, as you can imagine, is a horrible abomination made from a cockatrice, a chimera, and a gorgon, respectively. The only other place where you'll find any of these creatures is in Dungeon Magazine number 134. In this edition of the magazine, there's a small adventure where you actually go to the Temple of Thessalar, and inside this ancient crypt, you actually fight a Thessal Hydra. There's actually a third edition stat block for the Thessal Hydra in this copy of the magazine. Other than that, you won't really find these monsters anywhere. They're weird, uncanny, and ultimately pretty cool. So today we're going to go over just exactly why any of these monsters exist, specifically the Thessal Hydra, and who Thessalar was and kind of how you might be able to incorporate some of the lore behind Thessalar and his abominations into your game. So as the story goes, Thessalar, who was, as I said, a powerful lich, basically Cronenberg the DNA of a bunch of Hydra eggs with some DNA that he spliced from other animals. You gotta accept your part of the blame! I'm not the one who fouled up the serum! I'm not the one who, 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 who haphazardly, you know, mixed a bunch of nonsense together and created a bunch of Cronenbergs! In many ways, he's the archetypal mad scientist. Except instead of science, he had occult death magic. What resulted from his first experiment here was the Thessal Hydra, and it was incredibly genetically unstable. So much so, that it was actually able to breed with just about any other animal and create these weird hybrid monsters. Hence why we have the Thessal trees, the Thessal Gorgon, and so on. Apparently, Thessalar tried to do these experiments on other creatures, but none of the creatures took to his DNA enhancing methods, aside from the Hydra. This is rationalized in the story as the fact that Hydras have regeneration and that was able to keep them alive, whereas the other creatures he experimented on would come to be only to die within a few hours. But the star of the show here really is the Thessal Hydra. Believed to be the original Thessal monster, and of course the most dangerous, this beast looks very similar to a Hydra except its legs are a lot more stumpy, it has a giant pincer for a tail, and its many heads are centered around a gaping maw that spits acid. So let's talk about just exactly what this creature can do and why you should be terrified of it. First off, I just want to say, despite what the kids in Stranger Things seem to think, a single fireball will most certainly not kill a Thessal Hydra. This baddie is CR 15 and it's definitely no pushover. As I was doing the conversion, I actually debated if it should even be higher than that because it's pretty brutal, especially if the party doesn't know what they're going up against when they get into the encounter. If they don't bring fire with them, there's a high probability that most of them will die, but we'll get back to that. This monstrosity is huge. It does not mess around, and it is a cold-blooded killer. It destroys anyone and everything that comes across its path with impunity. Now that said, it's not necessarily evil, but it suffers from that same almost unending hunger that afflicts the Hydra. So it's acting on animalistic instinct alone, more or less, and anything that moves and is made of meat is considered food. Like the Hydra, where it gets at least half of its DNA, maybe 40%, 60%, who can really be sure, its heads allow it to see in many directions, which means if you do use flanking rules, this thing cannot be flanked. In addition to that, it gets advantages on saves against pretty much any mind affecting... In addition to that, it gets advantages on saves against a bunch of effects such as being charmed, blind, deafened, pretty much any situation where having multiple brains or sets of eyes is going to give you a benefit, this guy gets advantage in that situation. However, unlike a regular Hydra, its bite attacks all deal acid damage. So not only are you being chomped on by this giant multi-headed snake-like creature, your body is being corroded by it. And speaking of corrosion, that giant mouth in the center of the creature isn't just for show. It can spit a giant glob of acid in a pretty large area that obviously causes acid damage. But 
any creature in that area who fails their save, all of the gear they're wearing, weapons held, corrodes. Now it's not like it instantly disintegrates, but the weapons and armor take a negative, and if that negative gets to a certain point, it completely disintegrates altogether. So where it might not be instant, it can still be pretty devastating, and before the armor or weapons are actually destroyed, they take negatives on damage or AC, depending on what the item is. And of course, we haven't talked about the pincer tail yet. As per the standard Hydra trope of attacking with all of its heads at once, it can also attack with its pincer-like tail, and if it connects with you, it's gonna grab you. And being grabbed by a Thessal Hydra obviously doesn't seem like the best thing in the world, but it does get worse. If you cannot manage to escape this turn, you're not going to necessarily have a next turn because the Thessal Hydra picks you up and throws you inside of the giant maw at the center of its body. Once you're in there, it swallows you whole. You take a bunch of acid damage and you are trapped. Now, of course, you can cut your way out if you have a weapon that does slashing damage or some kind of spell that would have a similar effect. But that really sucks to be in that situation because not only is your turn wasted trying to escape from this thing, you're also going to take acid damage, of course. It's not necessarily a death sentence, but it can be a huge boon to the Thessal Hydra to remove a powerful combatant for the turn and do some extra damage to them. And one final feature here that you probably saw coming if you're familiar with the Hydra, but if you cut off one of its heads, it's going to grow back two heads. Fortunately, there is a way to subvert this, and that is by dealing fire damage to it. If you corrode those wounds when you deal them, the heads won't grow back. Or you can just not cut off any heads, period. Mechanically, the way this works is if a player deals 25 damage in one turn to a Thessal Hydra, it lops off one of its heads. At the beginning of the Thessal Hydra's next turn, if it hasn't taken any fire damage, it grows back two heads and regenerates 10 hit points. However, if the party knows about this ahead of time and they bring some fire magic with them or some other way to deal fire damage, they can focus on lopping off heads and then sealing the wound so that the Hydra just dies when all of its heads are cut off. This is really the best way to fight a Hydra because otherwise you're going to have a bunch of hit points to get through. It's very clear that this is what the designers want you to do. They want you to cut off all the heads and then seal the wounds. In a balanced fight, you will not outlast the Hydra or the Thessal Hydra in this case. So kind of seeding that information with your party, if you can, is always good. Now, of course, if they just rush in there without doing any research, there's not really much you can do there. That's not your fault. But they're in for a much tougher encounter and they may lose a member or two depending on how things go for them. Now speaking of this creature from a design perspective, I was kind of thinking of some ways that we could redesign this creature to modify it a little bit. Honestly, this creature already has a fair amount going for it and it's already complex enough where I don't know if there's too much I would change. However, if you were looking for something a little bit more interesting, you could have a version of the Thessal Hydra that is extremely genetically unstable. And by this I mean maybe you give it a subtype of an ooze. So it's a Thessal Hydra, and it's also an ooze that can pull people in and its body is acidic. Maybe it's so genetically unstable that the very ecosystem in which it exists is corrupted by its mere presence. Perhaps it lies at the end of a dungeon that is populated with other weird and gross hybrid monsters. You can have a lot of fun with just combining two monsters into one thing and just taking the best from each creature. And if you have the Thessal Hydra to blame for it, then it gives a nice theme to a pretty interesting dungeon. And that brings me to my next point, is the Thessal monster is more or less a template that you could kind of put onto any creature. Pretty much any creature that has a chance to be in contact with a Thessal Hydra could have been corrupted by its genetic instability. I can only imagine a creature like the Thessaltris came to be because a cockatrice laid its clutch of eggs in a pool that was corrupted by the Thessal Hydra who lived there. I think my biggest question would be though, what would happen if this creature somehow got mixed with human DNA? If you had a humanoid walking around that had multiple snake heads protruding from its neck and then one maw kind of thing in the center of its head, or head. Could make for an interesting group of cultists that worship the Thessal Hydra as a god being the one who gave them life, quote unquote. Or as I said, if you actually want to put Thessalar or some other type of mad scientist wizardy guy in your campaign as the creator of the Thessal Hydra, that could be a good boss for a dungeon too, with the Thessal Hydra maybe as like a mid boss. Or if you're not ready to put the party up against a powerful spellcaster or lich Thessalar stand-in, you could always have them face a student of Thessalar. Or maybe not even a direct student, but just someone who found his writings in the abandoned part of some ancient temple where they were thought to be lost for generations. And upon reading about his experiments and corrupt things that he did with the genetics of the creatures of the world, 
This person then took it upon themselves to further Thessalar's legacy. Or like I said, if it's a high level campaign, maybe they face Thessalar himself. If you like this creature though, and you want to use it, and you don't really feel like dropping a whole adventure chain into your going campaign, you could easily just have a Thessal Hydra emerge as a weird roaming monster. It's one of those things that the party's going to ask questions about and not really understand, and that's okay. Maybe this Thessal Hydra has wandered so far from the place it was created, there's no way for them to really track it down, and they're just kind of left wondering. Mystery is a good thing. Anyways, that's all I had on this creature for today. If you find this kind of stuff interesting and you want to look into it a little bit more, I definitely recommend reading up on Thessalar and his kind of legacy of creating abominations. He's literally the self-proclaimed creator of creatures like the owl bear and the rust monster. Basically anything that's a combination of two things or just seems weird and shouldn't exist naturally, Thessalar probably had one of his hands in it. If you do like what I do here though and you want to support the channel, please subscribe and definitely check out the description below. We've got links to our Reddit, Facebook page, Twitter, Discord, all that good stuff. And I do have a Patreon set up as well, so if you're able to and want to support the channel in that way, please definitely check that out. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it and I will see you next week.